Hello, I'm Lord Jimsical, and you're watching You Have Issues, a program all about comics. Vampires are cool, aren't they? Well, they used to be, until sh like Twilight turned them into effeminate bellends. I much prefer the old school vampires who made more of an effort to look badass than simply posing or just spouting pretentious drivel. So, with that in mind, I present to you Castlevania The Belmont Legacy. Castlevania The Belmont Legacy is a comic adaptation by IDW, loosely based on the Game Boy title Castlevania The Adventure. Written by Mark Andrako and with art by E.J. Sue, this is the series' first foray into the Western comics market. The story follows Christopher Belmont, the ancestor of Simon Belmont, who many of us know as the original protagonist of the first Castlevania game. I can see why they picked Christopher Belmont, as he's only appeared in two games on the Game Boy and thus little is known about him, which will give the writer a bit of leeway. There's no way they'd have been able to please the Simon Belmont fanboys, so if you ask me, they did the right thing. The story opens with an epic scene that I'm amazed hasn't appeared in any of the games that I've played. It shows the Count himself proposing a toast to his valiant foes which is shown to be a mass field of his impaled victims. Dracula's brides bring him a young boy who has been kidnapped. Christopher Belmont then approaches the castle and calls out Dracula to release the child. Dracula then appears on a balcony and brings forward the boy, revealed to be Christopher's son who has now been turned into a vampire. But lo and behold, it was all just a nightmare. Christopher doesn't have a son after all and has never confronted Dracula in his lifetime. We then see Christopher's bride-to-be, Ilya, in town treating herself by buying a few ornaments. While she's out doing this, she's jeered at by local bastards the Bartley family, who seem to have a bit of an unexplained rivalry with the Belmonts. They decide to taunt her for marrying Christopher and warn her of the Dark Lord Dracula's return to end the Belmont lineage. Oh, those Bartleys, eh? What are they like? Christopher is preparing for his joyous wedding day and is also wary of the Belmont legacy, which is being part of a sacred bloodline charged with defeating Dracula when he rises every century. He seems to be sceptical about his duty as a Belmont. Even as his wedding approaches, he just chalks up his family history as merely fairy tales meant to scare children and is averse to accepting his destiny. As luck would have it, the resurrection is taking place alongside Christopher's wedding day, being performed by none other than the Bartley family. Evil redhead Sona seems to be leading the resurrection of Dracula for her own personal gain. Upon his resurrection, Dracula then visits the Belmont Cemetery and proceeds to dig up a few graves before breaking into Christopher's parents' mausoleum and trashing the place. While the desecration of graves is a horrible act, I just think it's small potatoes compared to the things Dracula could do to intimidate the Belmonts. I mean, fuck's sake, he's Dracula after all. Christopher amasses a group of warriors to assist him in his revenge plot. His wife decides to join him in the great siege of Count Dracula's castle merely a day after the wedding. That's your choice for a honeymoon? Well, oh, each to their own, fuck it, I'd have chosen Australia. They are also joined by his butler and family friends, the Totoyans, who are implied to be a family of blacksmiths that provide the Belmont family with the weapons and means to battle Dracula. This family consists of Gaspar Totoyan and his grandchildren, Victor and Pasha. Christopher Belmont's butler, Deimos, is like a badass Alfred, willing to join the fray and dish out ass kickings with a crossbow after making tea and sandwiches. I do find the inclusion of an ersatz Scooby gang incredibly odd. Alright, I understand why they did it, because it would have been less thrilling showing an inexperienced Belmont storming the castle. But really, this just feels more like a Belmont family picnic than a castle siege. Personally, I think all these extra characters are unnecessary, and would have preferred it if Christopher and Deimos stormed the castle in a buddy cop kind of way instead. Dracula is shown to be young and sordid as opposed to his usual aristocratic appearance. He is never clothed and often switches between his humanoid form and bat form. Personally, I'm not fond of this depiction of Dracula as he looks more like a beefed up smurf than a vampire and behaves like a dick rather than a calculating and menacing villain. I mean, what happened to the badass in a snazzy outfit constantly hamming up his lines? I'm also not pleased that the Totoyans are more motivated to battle Dracula than Christopher is. Up until he departs for the castle, he's doing nothing more than shaking off the looming threat of Dracula as fairy tales and trying to avoid his destiny. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with a reluctant hero, but considering that the Belmonts are a noble and heroic family, these attributes should come naturally to him. The art is fantastic. It has the typical style of anything that Western publishers produce month after month, with a very subtle hint of anime thrown in there, thankfully not gone over the top like the cover art for the DS game Dawn of Sorrow. I have to say, the thing I'm most disappointed with about this comic is the lack of interiors for Dracula's castle. 
They spend most of the story just climbing mountains to reach the dungeons in order to save Ilya, so we barely get any look inside Castle Dracula. I mean, it's not just the interiors, I mean, there's even a complete lack of splash pages as well. It's just such a wasted opportunity. I don't think the creative team were at fault, because they had to squeeze as much as they could into a five issue series, and all the splash pages would have just taken up too much space. But there's no reason they couldn't have got around that by making the journey up the mountains shorter and then spent the remainder of the book battling through the castle before it culminates in a final showdown between Christopher Belmont and Dracula mano a mano in the throne room at the top of the castle. I think this story was good, but it felt really rushed considering how much continuity the Castlevania series has as a whole. I think it would have benefited as a 12 issue series to tell the story in a much more careful and relaxed way. To summarise, it's a good first attempt at a Castlevania comic, Alright, it's not the best adaptation I've seen, but it's definitely not the worst one I've ever seen. Thank you for watching today's episode of You Have Issues, I'm Lord Jimsical. And before I go, I'm going to show you some of the best fill in the blanks entries from last week. And now here's this week's one. 